Yo, what's up? We are now at Ayuntidal and this is IPACE EV320 it is called. So hardware wise it's exactly the same as the EV400. The 320 means 320 horsepower. The regular IPACE is called EV400 has 400 horsepower but this car has the exact same motor the exact same hardware as the more the big brother but it is cheaper and they just they just tune down the the power in the software so um, in this video i'm going to do a range test and also a charging test because supposedly they boosted up the charging speed finally so right now we are just waiting to get it 100 percent i can show you oh wait since when did they put black black logo and black uh, stuff there instead of uh, chrome yeah this one is it d chrome huh i just noticed and then inside so this is the let me show you it's the se trim so it's it's fairly well okay come on come back here come back here. come back here. it's fairly well equipped with a leather seat nice leather seat perforated it has panorama roof that is also nice because uh, the panor roof, panorama roof gives you better uh, noise insulation versus the, the regular roof. And then look here. Well, okay. I have to go on the other side. I fail. Okay, let me skip the snow here. Okay. Show you. I think, well, can we? No. We have to, we have to, you have to fire up the, the pussycat. There, 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 okay, okay. Look now. You see what I see? This one here, this is double glass, but it's only on the front. If you look in the rear, okay, on, let me go here. You see that the rear still has the single glass. So that's just how it is, I guess. And then as for the back, what, can I open this even? Oh, barely. Oh, careful, careful, careful. So in the back, you still have nice space just like in an ipace we have now usb-c and 12 volt outlet i think that panel here yeah in in the more uh, exclusive trims you get uh, adjustment on the back but there here is just what is this it's just a weird panel yeah <laughs> so overall though nice interior in the, in the jag wait this is tinted i just realized now the window is tinted hmm nice nice let's get inside oh, so what i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do now is wait you gotta be kidding me it stopped again i have to fire up the pussycat and then i can do this yeah so we are charging you see we're almost at 100 percent now it goes fairly fast towards 99 percent okay and then we're going to reset everything and drive 90 kilometers per hour first. And this car has a new infotainment. It's faster. It's nicer looking. See here navigation. Tush, tush. See how smooth it is? Huh? Do you like that shit? See how snappy it is? Wait, how do we... How do we... No, 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 you don't go back there. North up. Yeah, okay, there, there, there. Look, you can see charging station there also. Yeah, so nice, nice, yeah. Let's wait a little bit more and then off we go. Wow, I think this is a new record. We have been here 106 minutes. We started at around 75% and it's been camping at 100% for the last uh, half an hour or 45 minutes. So you see, we, we are pulling four kilowatt from, uh, yeah, three kilowatt, three kilowatt to four kilowatt. From the charging station this is what the charger reports delivering what goes into the battery might be a different story we have preheating going on right now it's barely oh, huh. and also yeah the display shows you something like this now it's been at 100 percent for the longest time it says time remaining zero minutes <laughs> uh, and then you see here on the little screen here you see precondition is on if you do this we switch off precondition and see what happens now with the with the charger status. You see, it's still pulling even with preconditioning off. It's still pulling three kilowatt for something. 
But I want to I want to keep preconditioning on. I fire it on again, and you, sh you should see a little initial spike. So the preconditioning pulls about 500 watts only to maintain heat in the cabin, and the rest goes into charging the battery, I guess. So this is a way for uh, Jaguar to uh, hide some initial uh, degradation. I've seen this in many, many other cars like Tesla, like i3, like the Korean cars also. They always hide a little bit of initial degradation, so it, it would look more uh, um, more consistent, the range, yeah, for the, last, for the first six months. Okay, it's still charging. A, B, C. Always be charging. Okay, disappear now. The, the whole uh, you can you can do this, and then it comes back. Uh, you you see that I have uh, pre conditioning on. Wait, wow, that's a dusty screen. Okay, it takes a while. There, there, there. there. Wait. Okay, uh, it, it's always like this. Every time you open the closet door, it has to reboot the whole system. You see the Jaguar logo is there. Rebooting. Jaguar I pace. Yeah, yeah, yeah now and now, huh, what? Wait, okay. And now it do, looks different than usual. But anyway, I'll just show that um, it's now been two and a half hours and it's still charging. It's still doing something. So anyway, I think, yeah, when, before I started preheating again, uh, it was pulling only one kilowatt. So now I will leave. Yeah, I think I, we have stayed here two and a half hours, guys. We haven't started the range test yet and it's getting dark soon. So... Uh, <laughs> Let's unplug and go. Oh yes, we are finally on the run, yes. And I'm gonna show you something that, you see, we are still at 100%, the car still reports 100%. But if you look here, we have now driven uh, 4.2 kilometers and uh, consumption was 263. So you see, we spent over one kilowatt hour and still we are at 100%. This is the way for the car to hide initial degradation. So I will see how long it takes before uh, this ticks down to 99%. Alright, 99% has been reached. And if you look at the trip, it was around 9 kilometers and 250 something. So it seems to be about 2 kilowatt hour of hidden energy. This corresponds with what I found in, in Tesla with similar battery size also. So yeah, about 2 kilowatt hour of initial degradation. Yeah, okay, okay. Good, good, good. We are now at Muir's Torna, and over here, it's nice and clear. Wow, I haven't seen nice weather like this in a long time. Oh, but auto steer does not exist in the, the new model now. They took it away, yeah. But I have to cruise at 94 kilometers per hour to match the, the 90 speed. So, all right, so far so good. And we are already down to 79%. And you see, we haven't, we haven't reached the end point yet, <laughs> so uh, fortunately this will be a fairly short test. to take a little pit stop here at Bolelon. Wow, they are planning to sell 2 million buns this year. <laughs> Massive. Yeah, I have to go to the restroom. I'm done now. It's the Type 3C restroom. So I parked the car over here and I can show you. Uh, we, yeah, I can show you stats inside. Okay, so far we have drawn, done 130, uh, 443 kilometers. We took a little detour from the highway. So just remember that when we do the measurement and the, the distance measurement. But yes, let's go back to Dahl now. We are now back at Dahl. And okay, according to Google, the trip meter should show about 100 and, wait, 182 kilometers, right? All right, route right around the roundabout. Did you guys, okay. I think around 182 from what I remember. All right, all right, you see here? At the roundabout, oh, it could be slippery here. I have to be careful. 
Okay, okay, okay. Look, look. 181 ish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that is so low, just like I measured in um, in the yellow test. So it's so low that I'm not counting it. It's less than 0.5 percent error. So that I guess just a coincidence because when I tried other uh, eye paces, they are uh, underreporting it, 2.7 uh, percent, but not this one. Okay, now let's go back. We are getting close to the end now. Ionity charger is right over there. Psh. And we are uh, now at 14%. So I'm going to run it down to about five-ish. Yeah, I don't want to run it too low. So right now, GOM claims I have, uh, let me see here. I need, I need to adjust a little bit. There is, yeah, GOM claims 49 kilometers. Okay. All right, consumption is actually quite low. 226 but you know what what I noticed is that uh, I remember Jaguar they said that they were they were going to uh, improve something with the consumption and uh, the rest of the cabin feels quite cold except for the driver's side so this is the smart air conditioning it only heats up the driver it's like a driver only in the Korean cars so that one seems to do the trick to uh, save energy but okay now we will drive a little bit further before we end it we are back at Ionity, so we came here with 6% and i show you some stats here, but I guess, uh, yes, uh, now I'm going to charge and then we do the high speed run, so I can summarize afterwards everything. Anyway, it's time for some food. So I went to Circle K here and they have Mexican, yes. Are you a Mexican or a Mexican? And right now the car, well, the car is pulling 107 kilowatts from the charging station. I think some of it goes to heating of the battery and some of it for heating of the cabin. But that means that we are receiving about 100 kilowatt. I've never seen this kind of charging speed in iPads before. So after I do the high speed run, then I have to document, I have to record the whole charging session. Hopefully it's faster than before. Let's try this. Mmm, 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 mmm. Taco salad from Circle K, recommended. We are now on the high speed run and I have to cruise 124 kilometers per hour. And uh, the consumption right now is three, oh, sorry, sorry, let me no, no, no. 314. <laughs> it should go up because we have gone downhill. So it should be around 320, 330 something, yeah. Uh, and uh, we are now down to 54%. I calculated that I should turn around once I hit around 45%. But I have to say, I noticed that this car is quiet, you know? Let me try to turn on the light here. It's a, it feels quiet. Uh, it, it feels more quiet than the old car. I, I don't know if they've done any improvements. I'm not sure, but at these speeds, this is, this is more quiet than Tesla. And way more quiet than Model 3, yeah. But uh, maybe Model S and X slightly better than Model 3, but it seems to be able to soak the, um, the, the road noise quite well. So it's actually very, very pleasing to drive around at 120 with this car. It's just very thirsty. <laughs> uh, we are back at Ioni Dal. Actually, right now we are already uh, we are shooting a video. Uh, the, re the charting session is going on over there so simultaneously while we're doing that i can use this camera to record the summary and it turns out that um, you know remember this is winter test of uh, ipace it managed to drive 350 kilometers uh, okay but, but the range okay the range is 372 kilometers that is actually very close to the summer range earlier and i believe the reason why they managed to make the car more efficient now is that they have this called smart uh, smart air conditioning where the butt sensor senses that we have only one driver and then it doesn't heat up the the on uh, the other side so that saves a little bit of energy so actually i measured it before in summer or i don't remember what well, it wasn't that cold but uh, 
the, the range now is close to the summer range. That is pretty good. But of course, if you try to do this again in summer, it might be even better. Maybe we can reach 400 kilometers. Uh, but also another interesting thing is that uh, earlier I managed to get only 81.8 kilowatt hour from this battery or this uh, little eye pace. This time I managed to get 83.8 kilowatt hour. So that is uh, two kilowatt hour more than usual, but that could be that that initial buffer that, that you know that why it took so long to charge today that two kilowatt hour buffer we might not see it again in six months it might be degraded and then at the high speed test I did uh, 275 kilometers total and it was thirsty you see there you have a big increase there between the low speed test and the high speed test. So this car is thirsty, but uh, at least what I measure is that even at the high speed test, um, okay, I didn't do a full measurement, but it could seem like we have almost no losses here. There must be something here, maybe 1%, but at least it's not 5 or 6%, otherwise we wouldn't measure that. So my impression is that this battery seems to be a good one. It seems to have low internal resistance. It can take uh, you know some discharging without uh, sacrificing uh, heat loss. Other batteries like in um, it was I think it was the MG battery yeah and um, uh, Polestar battery also and wait well, they just happen to be Chinese hmm. and the last one was um, uh, Honda E they had about five to six percent heat loss on the high speed versus low speed test but okay all right so anyway Overall though, I have to say that overall, uh, not uh, besides the whole range test that I did now, it seems like this car is a nice upgrade from the old one. I've driven the old one several times and there was like mm, little, little things I didn't like about it. Uh, but the new one seems to be better. I'm not sure when it comes to noise, but infotainment is slightly better. It has faster on the charger and also range wise, it seems to be pretty okay. So yeah, and now that we have this, this EV320, uh, actually, if you spec up this one here, cost um, about 700,000 nook. If you would spec up an EB400 to the SE trim with about the same equipment, but just 80 more horsepower, then you had to pay 120,000 nook more. Yeah, it cost 820k versus 700k for this one. So to me, that's a bargain because this car still feels fast. Okay, not as fast as the EB400, but plenty of enough power. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.